Hola amigos, hoy tendremos otro trabalenguas, pero este trabalenguas creo que es bastante más difícil que el anterior que hemos visto. Nuestro trabalenguas anterior fue muy fácil y así que lo vamos a compensar con uno que creo que es verdaderamente difícil. So our previous tongue twister was quite easy, therefore today we have a quite difficult one, right? This one has many, many R's, rrr, the R sound, ¿ok? Bien, vamos a empezar por hablar y explicar cada una de las palabras que componen este trabalenguas, ¿ok? Componen este trabalenguas, that form, right, the tongue twister. Ok, parra and guerra are two very common Spanish last names or family names, ok? Parra, guerra are two common last names. Also, they mean words, right? Parra is the, a, a vine, right? So, the, the plant where the, the grapes grow, right? That is parra. And guerra means war, war, W-A-R, guerra. But in the, in the tongue twister, these are just used as family names, okay? I haven't made them up. These family names exist and are, and are a old, traditional family names in Spanish. Okay, tenía is simple past for the, the verb to have. Una gorra, a cap. Cap, the cap is gorra, okay? can be gorro or gorra. So the word cap can be a masculine or feminine noun, okay? And they mean the same thing, right? Some people like to say gorro, some people like to say gorra. Both are okay. Don't confuse it with hat. The word for hat is sombrero. The word for cap is gorra. Okay, again, tenía means had. Una perra, a dog, uh, uh, or a bitch, actually. Perra is the female dog, right? The bitch. Perro is dog, perra is she dog, or bitch. Parra, again, uh, parra is uh, the last name. Peleó con guerra. Fought or quarreled with guerra. Peleó is simple past for the verb Pelear. Pelear. That means to quarrel or even to fight. Pelear is also to fight. Okay? Usually when we talk about to fight in a battle or a war, we use the verb luchar. This one is more used for battle and war. Okay? And, and even for, for wrestling, we use the verb luchar. But pelear, pelear It usually is more kind of a more uh, less sophisticated fight okay pelear okay so usually when it's a professional fight or a battle or, or a war we use luchar when it is a uh, kids for children fighting we say pelear okay or a quarrel somebody quarreling we use pelear right so peleó con guerra he quarreled with guerra Because, porque means because, the bitch of guerra, or guerra's bitch, le comió la gorra a parra. Ate, comió is a simple past tense for the verb comer, that means to eat. Okay? Ate the cap of parra, or ate parra's cap, the cap, la gorra. And here I want to show you something interesting. Literally, if we, if we literally want to say ate parra's cap, we would say comió la gorra de parra. But here we are saying le comió la gorra a parra. Right? Instead of saying comió la gorra de parra. This would be the, the, the correct way of saying eight parras cap. The thing is that in Spanish, 
the more uh, common way of, of saying the same thing is not eight parras cap. We would say uh, it. Uh, how, let's see. How can I translate it? He ate itself to parra the cap, right? Okay, so it makes no sense whatsoever in English. But that's how we would say it 99% of the times in Spanish, right? In Spanish it's correct because Spanish has and uses so many reflexive verbs, okay? So here the, the verb is not really comer, but comerle comerle, with this reflexive particle here, okay? Comerle, which means comer to eat, and le means to somebody else, in this case to para, okay? So, the, the particle here, le, that means to the other person, right? This means literally to the other person, or to something, or to somebody else. So, to para, uh, to le and, and a actually need to go together, okay? To para ate the cap, right? So that is the structure, that is the logic of this sentence. And uh, I know it's difficult to translate it word by word in English, but this is very, this kind of reflexive verbs applied are very, very, very common and typical from Spanish, right? Okay. Let's read it once again. Parra had a cap and Guerra had a bitch. Parra quarreled with Guerra because the bitch of Guerra, Guerra's bitch, ate Parra's cap. Or two. Parra ate the cap. Okay? Good. We do not have to say her cap because when we say two Parra, it's understood that the cap is hers, ¿ok? Bien, ahora vamos a leer este trabalenguas, que tiene muchas R's. Así que vamos a leer cada, eh, cada renglón por separado. Let's read separately each row. Renglón means row or line, ¿ok? Parra tenía una gorra. Parra tenía una gorra. Y Guerra tenía una perra. Parra peleó con Guerra porque la perra de Guerra le comió la gorra a Parra. ¿Ok? So, See, note that this R here is the only R in the, in, in the whole tongue twister that is not pronounced R. It's R, right? So this is not PORQUE. It's PORQUE. PORQUE, okay? PORQUE. So there, try to be conscious and thoughtful or mindful while you read this, right? So you pronounce each word, each syllable correctly, and always your understanding has to follow, right? You must be understanding whatever you are speaking aloud. Let's read it a bit faster. Parra tenía una gorra y Guerra tenía una perra. Parra peleó con Guerra porque la perra de Guerra le comió la gorra a Parra. Okay? And if we want to read it, all in real speed. Parra tenía una gorra y Guerra tenía una perra. Parra peleó con Guerra porque la perra de Guerra le comió la, la gorra a Parra. ¿Ok? And faster. Parra tenía una gorra y Guerra tenía una perra. Parra peleó con Guerra porque la perra de Guerra le comió la gorra a Parra. ¿Ok? So, just um, slowly, just go gradually uh, reading more fluently until you can actually read it without jamming or stammering, okay? 
but always if you see your understanding of each word cannot accompany the speed then you read slowly because your understanding needs to follow right bueno gracias por acompañarme si tienen preguntas me escriben y terminamos esta clase por hoy chao